Hello and welcome. So, let us begin. What we want to do here is create a brand new world. And we're going to, we're going to use the simplistic um, create new world option because, yeah, I'm fairly simple. That did not appear to work. There we go. Welcome to the Alpha of Dwarf Fortress, etc, etc. So, world size. We're going to build a medium sized world. It's going to take a while to generate, but um, it gives us a few more options. We go for a short history, low number of civilizations. Actually, we'll go medium number. Medium number of civilizations. We'll go for medium number of sites, medium number of beasts, medium savagery, and we're going to turn the mineral occurrence up slightly. Bit cheating, I know, but we'll turn it up slightly. Let us go. So, new region. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of using a different graphics patch um, if you followed my other two Let's Plays. I'm trying this one out because it was in with the uh, latest new pack of um, 3411 or whatever version we're using, 34 something. I think it's 11 or 12. And I just figured, you know what, I'd, I'd use a different graphics patch this time. It does have a few more detailed models of dwarves and things, so we'll go with it. And we're into the second age of myth, as it now spawns the various events and the historical figures and all of the dead things. So huzzah. This will take a while. So, I have our seven submitted dwarves. Thank you very much for everybody who um, submitted dwarves. I have filled in a few blanks, which were kind of necessary in the skill list. Um, if you also submitted characters and I didn't use you in the initial seven, don't worry, there's a long list of immigrants. And I'll basically try and give you um, people who are quite close to what you said. Or if um, if I end up with a load of cheesemakers and peasants, um, I'll probably convert them. I will say, I got a lot more military dwarves than I was expecting. I got a lot of military dwarves. I've got, let's see, uh, we got um, one, two, three... Yeah, we got three military, three dwarves with military skills, which I'm mean, starting at seven is not necessarily a good idea. I mean, I almost say this is this is a reclaim fortress thing. And there we are, 125 years in. We are in the third age of legends, and as you can see, we have got mostly a ocean-bound world, which is fine. We just got to remember salt water, so we want to be, we want to be inside territory as much as we can. Anyway, we're going to accept that because that seems fine. But I've, I've, I've basically worked it out. We will be able to survive until we get some immigrants. And certainly we'll survive until autumn. Which is when we get the first trade post. And that is what we must do. We must have things done by then. So, the reason I went quite large is because I, I have a very specific build in mind here. And we need a lot of things to go for us. So, a larger area gives us more places we can explore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create... Um, I'm going to create a miniature town based off of a city from a book, the Wheel of Time novels. We're going to make a miniature Malkia. That's the plan here. Or Malkia. I think it's Malkia. Malkia, Malkia, however it's pronounced. But that's what we're going to make. We're going to make the Seven Towers. So it's basically a walled off city with seven towers in it. And yeah, that's what we're going to do. It's going to be mostly above ground as well. I'm going to have underground storage and obviously mines. But beyond that, has the game actually crashed? It might have crashed. This game does that occasionally. Well, we'll give it a few more moments while I kind of carry on. It's made the world at least, so it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna worry us too much there. But yeah, I'm gonna build a seven tower oh there we go. Seven towers. Each of them has to be at least twelve tall before I'll count this LP completed. And I need some sort of decorative top, but I'll get there when I get there. Also, each tower has to be made out of a different material. So, I'm going to make one out of wood, one out of stone, one out of glass, one out of bricks, one out of metal, one out of a precious metal, and if I can do it, one out of soap. Yep, we're going to build a 12 tall tower out of soap and see if it works. But we shall see. I Let's, um... Let's start playing. So we just made region seven, because I like to, I like to make loads of regions just because I do. I should go through the legends of some of them actually quickly here. So it now sorts out the events. So huzzah. These are all the artifacts that have been created so far. 
I do love this game for this. It's just the amount of detail and what it creates. It is weird. Civilizations and other entities. These are all the sort of things that have existed. It. I could go into so much detail in reading all of those, but I'm not going to because that would that would take forever, longer than the actual Dwarf Fortress LP itself, which I should probably start. So here we go. So because of what we want to build, we need quite a lot of things to um, be there. We need an area with clay, soil, flux stone, and ideally I want there to be a brook because I can. Brooks are quite nice things to have because they're sort of rivers that aren't that aren't if you get what I mean. Also, don't want to be set up too close to somewhere else. Very deep soil, shallow metals. So we do need some flux stone. Definitely going to need some flux stone. But we'll see. What can we do here? Some soil, shallow metals. So we found some clay over here. We also need a reasonable number of trees. Actually. Let's um let's see if we can find some flux nope, no aquifers, no. Nope. We want flux stone, we want shallow metal, we want deep metal, soil and some clay. Do search. So it's now gonna do a massive search for us and eventually it will find us somewhere that kind of has it. Yeah, we've asked for a lot here, but there should be some places. If we can find a brook on one of them as well, that would be awesome. There's a lot down to the south. But that's mostly ice areas, and ice, ice presents some problems in and of itself, to be honest. Though it is quite fun building things out of ice occasionally. Also, the guitar music has stopped playing. Aww. We're, we're sad now. There's no guitar music going on. Or whatever string, or whatever um, string instrument that is. I think it's supposed to be a guitar. I think it was a guitar initially. And yeah, the music will drive everybody else insane, but I, I can't play Dwarf Fortress without it. It's very, very weird. <laughs> I can listen to that music all the time, and it won't get on my nerves. It, it's one of the few things I can do that that kind of applies to. I might I might switch it to other things. Um, I've got some certain royalty free tracks I can probably play in the background, which um, I won't get um, I won't get shouted at for using, I suppose. And of course, I still have my storybook intros um, when I get round to it because I like doing those sort of storybook intro type things. Right, so it has found us some suitable sites. Let's okay, let's go. No, come on. Right, so it found us some suitable sites. Let's go and just get to some of them. So it does have flux stone. It does have deep metals. Let's um, see if we can't improve that. Has some clay. Has some very deep metals. Doesn't have any shallow metals though. No, that's not going to be good enough. I don't think. Now this might be a bit better. Oh, it is the Untamed Wilds again. Dare we go for that again? I don't know. Let's see, we've got a few over here actually. So, thick, thick heavily forested, but in the Untamed Wilds. Oh, that might not be so bad. Well, the problem is we do don't have really a brook or anything, which I might be asking for too much with the brook as well. I'll be honest, but it is scorching here. Heavily forested, thick, still in the untamed wilds. It's a lot of savagery to go over, actually. All right, let's um. Let's go right across to here, because if I look there, there's some sort of areas that are sort of in the middle. Oh, we're heading to evil territory here. Evil is always a bit of a dangerous place to go. Clay, deep soil, 
What's that? That's actually a stream. Clay, deep soil. It doesn't have any flux stone, though. No, I, I do like having flux stone because it's A, more valuable, and B, you can turn it into steel. Well, you can use it to get some steel. That's a mountain range, so we're probably not likely to find anything there. This might work, though. This is a brook. It's in the wilderness. Moderate thing there. We do have... Clay, deep soil, and some flux stones. Within all of that. It's also temperate, which is nice. Um, so that would be sand as well. So that would get us glass. Temperate savannah. We will be hurting for trees. And I think the first one is going to have to be a tree type area anyway. So, you know what? I'm going to gamble with this. We're going to gamble here. So, where are we on sort of map and thing? Is that. We're going to go with that. Right, so now we're going to prepare for the journey carefully. Sorry that took a while. I'm I'm glad we did it anyway. Oh, darn it. I just realized that's also the button I'm using for recording. So I've just now gone and flipped a load of recordings up. So let me just uh, find the old thing there. I'm going to change the pause button to something else. That. We're also going to change the record start stop button to something else. Right. So now that that's done. We have a skilled miner. This is Shadowhawk Thunder. Why is eight now? Dig da. Oh, I know why. Because I was foolishly selecting this. That's why whatever button I pressed actually did things. Awesome. Right. So let's now change it to that, and let's click out of that so I don't do things that are silly again. Right. We done? Yes. Right, so Shadowhawk Thunderbane is essentially our um, leader of this expedition. Uh, the leader um, does apply to military skills, not to um, anything else. He's also going to be our record keeper, although I'm not going to be doing a lot of record keeping, at least early on. It's useful to have one, but until you build them in office, it's not really going to work. Intimidation, judge of intent, and he's also going to be our main appraiser. You need a reasonable appraiser because he's the guy who tells you how valuable your stuff is and allows you to trade um, at some sort of profit. Also, the music, for whatever reason, tends to go on just because. So this is the new and improved Shadowhawk Thunderbane. So huzzah. Next up, dwarf number two, whose name it shall for, for, for all time be known as Karzak Malenstone. Who is going to be our sort of well, was originally going to be the sole guard of this um, expedition. I don't normally take warrior dwarves on my first sort of run, and this time I'm sort of running with three. But basically, this isn't a former D&D &D character, so I've, so I've made a special case for him. He's got to be in. So he's going to be our initial blacksmith. This does give us a slight... Actually, what do I want here? Which one actually is blacksmith? It's... Oh, I actually thought I actually wrote Blacksmith down as a skill, but I'm not sure which one it actually should go under. I think I might just make him a metalsmith then. So I think that's more or less the same thing. In fact, yes, it is. I think Blacksmith is the overall class, but whatever. He's also going to be our woodcutter. Yes, two more unique skills there are not going to be, but he is an axe dwarf, so he should be reasonably good at using an axe. He will then have armor use, because armor use is one of the more difficult things to train in this game, but is one of the better things to have. So he's going to be a skilled armor user, and then a competent axe dwarf. 
Now you'll notice we'll run out of points before we actually get to um, get all these dwarfs done. Don't worry, we will be um, spending some things up a bit later. So, new customization. This fur dwarf shall be known forevermore as Zarus. Mind Melder. Right, and that is by um, Zachariah Meister, or however you want to pronounce that. And he is going to be our comedian, which is the only skill he actually told me about. So I had a bit of a blank slate with um, creating this one, which I didn't mind because it allowed me to make, make him do some other things. He was originally going to be the leader until I noticed the other four dwarves coming in with mostly combat skills. So what he is now rather usefully, is our mason and architect with some minor engraving skills. Um, though I probably won't have him on engraving at all. But building designer, um, skilled at that as well. Because we're going to need stone walls. We're going to need them. It's going to have to happen. And also masonry is very important. Next up, we are going to have to probably sell some things. So we only have one copper pick, and we're going down to one copper battle axe because, thinking about this, we don't need them. Right, so that gives us a few points in reserve. I'm then going to get rid of one of each of those. Some of the thread, some of the cloth. Maybe some of the bags and one of the ropes. This all feels wrong, by the way. Also go down to two quivers. Right, that'll do. We should have enough points now to customize the other four dwarves. So, dwarf number four is Horus. Oh, nearly, nearly went over two, two dwarves there. That would have been terrible. Horus One Eye, which his character was submitted by Horus um, Fifty Five, I think. Horus Fifty Five. Yep. And we're gonna then go with. He is our basic um, first ambusher, or hunter dwarf. Which is a problem, actually. Which I didn't think about too much until I actually have now just looked at the character things again. But we have a lot of people who can hunt and nobody who can actually dissect the um, body and actually get food out of it. So, yay, awesome. Um, oh, we've gone straight past it, haven't I? Yeah, there we are. So, competent marksman, or marks dwarf. We then need ambushing, which we set to nine, I believe. So he's very good at stalking things and then killing them later. Um, we then give him hammer dwarf one level of because if he ends up running out of bolts, the crossbow can be used as a hammer, as a makeshift hammer. So that kind of works. Um, we also then give him one point of armor use because again, it's difficult to train. It's always worth having. And then one point of trapping. So he is pretty much only good at um, hunting. Yes, I might consider dropping the ambushing and giving him butchery. Because then at least he would be able to go and actually dissect the corpses and give us some money that way, I suppose. Mm, well, we'll consider that. I might have to do something a little more fine-tuning. Anyway. And also, what is it with all the people losing limbs here? But, um, Hank, Free Fingers, Aelstrom. Oh, Aelstorm, sorry. And he, of course, with that brilliant little name, will be a very useful dwarf indeed. He, in fact, is probably the most useful dwarf you will ever have. He is going to be our brewmaster. Because you always need a brewmaster. He's also going to be our grower, and as his backup jobs, very important these, he's going to be a wood burner, novice um, furnace operator. In fact, do we want it that way around? Because there is a guarantee of getting um, there is a guarantee of getting trees, albeit not many at them looking at the map. But there isn't necessarily a guarantee of getting the fuel for furnace operations. So we'll go that way around. I think it only affects the speed they do it, but still, we're going that way around with it. So, three fingers. Next up, we want Dark Alex Hunter, who is our second marks, who is our second ambush dwarf. 
And he also has additional skills, which he... Actually, this one might have actually got all the skills he asked for, because... Um, it's fine, we'll work something out with this. But we go with Comedian 2 points of. So he's already a better comedian than our actual Comedian Comedian. Um, Fisher Dwarf. Actually, we'll get these done first. So two points in crossbow, two points in armor use, and then it is two points in ambushing and Fisher Dwarf. Where's the fishing? There we are. One point in Fisher Dwarfing and one point in... He didn't ask for it, but he's getting it now, because I've just realised it's missing. And this is something I do not want missing. He's now a novice mechanic. Oh dear, that's going to be terrible. But we got a we got a mechanic, kind of. It's fine. He doesn't have to be a good fisherman. He just has to get the occasional fish. I tend to sort out our food a bit later. Next up, we have the good doctor. No, not the mad Dr. Newmuckle. We have the not at all mad and completely sane Dr. Brian... Blackheart, who definitely is not a um, servant of the old, the old ancient ones who will one day rule this world with their tentacled might. Definitely won't be happening. No, this one's definitely sane, and he is basically going to be our carpenter. But also, as I say, he's going to be the good doctor. So, diagnosis is the most important skill there. The rest are more or less fine. Sutra and Wound Dresser. Do we have one more skill with him? No, that's it. So hurrah, we have a rounded doctor. And that is it. So these are the seven dwarves who will embark. And now I get to basically get some item upgrades. Now I believe both of our, um, our ambushes, because they're the majority skills they've got, will have crossbows and some bolts. And I don't have to pay for those. So hurrah there. We're going to up our plump helmet spawn to 9 and our cave wheat to 9. Because food is important. Speaking of food being important, we need two hunting dogs. In fact, if we can get a breeding pair of hunting dogs. That might backfire on me later, but for now that's how we go. Next, we need to have some animals that we can... I might go with ducks. So one drake and five ducks. So that'll give us five lots of eggs, which we can eat. And that will sort out our early food. Right, so ten points left. Um, what can we actually do with ten points left? I know what we should do, but we'll um, worry about that in a bit. Raw glass. Should get some clay. Backpacks, splints. We should get some lye if we're going to have some soap, to be honest. Then I'm just going to spend additional points to go 1 1 1 1 because, in fact, actually, where can I cut some things here? Let's cut. Let's cut a bucket go one one whenever you possible always have one more than you need because it adds an extra barrel or an extra bag or an extra something and it's free essentially so it's worth thinking about we're then going to go with some no actually don't go with that the other thing is i would normally swap out my copper battle axes for um for wooden training ones but we're not going to this time because of things. And if I knew what those things were, it'd be awesome. Um, yeah, let's go for a single Dwarven Wine and a single... Yeah, if all those fails, always go with single things because they just give you... Um, they give you a free barrel of it once it's used up. Sand, one point for that. And sand, one... Oh, actually, no. I know what we should have taken. We might still take this, actually. Oh, fine-tuning, fine-tuning. Um, 
yeah, I, I like taking quite a lot of milk at the start. And when trading, I will take lots of milk because it converts really, really easily to cheese. And anything you can do to sort out one of your major issues, and food is an issue at the start, is a good thing you should be doing. Um, but I, th I think we'll do with that. So we're going to save that as our Let's Play Embark. And then we are going to Embark. So, our preparations are now complete. We have arrived after a journey from, in, from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond your heart. Beyond. Yeah. It should add some commas and things, but it doesn't quite do that properly. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all Indian death. There are almost no supplies left, but your stout labor comes substance. Sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve, to delve secure lodgings, ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins at this place. I will consider the name of that a little later. I might even be able to rename it. But strike the earth indeed. So let us go. Pause. So. Let's have a quick look at our area then. So there is all of our sand. We have, we have black sand walls. We have actually camels we can, um, oops, pause. We have camels we can actually harvest. So look at that. Uh, what else have we got here? Sandy loam. We've got plenty of soil at the very least. And also we have some access to gemstones. We have, ooh, limonite. Okay. This is not a bad starting location, then, actually, looking at this. Yeah, the trees are a bit scarce. Also, there's no river. So, let's find out where our caravan is. Our caravan's there. Right, what I would, looking at this map, think about at the moment is we've got a small pool which is up there. But I think we want to set up. We want to set up with that inside the area. Now I have a map out, mapped out sort of location here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to designate a channel to start with. And this is going to be the sort of outer area. And this is going to be quite large. So bear with me here. We need to basically make a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2. Yeah, oh, damn it. Yeah, well. Alright. Well, anyway, this is something I'm going to have to do in my own time. But basically, I'm going to set up a channel. And then I'm going to set up the initial dig points. Because I want to build stockpile rooms under the towers themselves which are going to be dependent on which tower goes there. So this is going to take a little bit of planning. So next time, when we actually begin properly, I will have laid out the starting bit of the fortress, and I will then begin the task of trying to explain how this game works. I say try because, yeah, it's going to be trying. So, Shadow 2012, strike the earth. Until next time.